Hey, Awakening Hearts. Welcome, welcome to Heartfelt Awakening Radio. We are with Elizabeth Kipp, and you know, you are an ancestral clearing practitioner, which we talked a little bit about just before the uh, recording started, and um, historical trauma specialist. I'm going to talk more about that and certified yoga teacher. Awesome. And she is going to be sharing about how we can use ancestral clearing to release the effects of intergenerational issues and trauma. And I've experienced that with myself and my clients and help us awaken our heart, our awakening hearts and purpose in the moment. Welcome, Elizabeth. Thank you for being on. Well, thank you so much. It's great to be here with you. So tell me, what is ancestral clearing? Oh, ancestral clearing is a is a modality that uh, was developed and is taught by John Newton of Health Beyond Belief. I'm one of his practitioners and I've been in the work since 2014. I first experienced uh, ancestral clearing for myself in a pain management program where he was one of the wellness uh, uh, practitioners. And I was so impressed with its effect that I was like, I'm taking the first training out of here. <laughs> so, yeah, you mentioned effects. So what are the effects of intergenerational trauma that I'm reading your, your discussion notes that can play on keeping us stuck in unhealthy, unconscious patterns of behavior? That really caught my attention. I would love to you to expand on that. Sure. Yeah. So so just, I can get down into the science-y part of it for you for just briefly. There's been a little bit of science done on humans. There's been more static science done on other critters. Like science has been able to measure 14 generations of effect from one generation to the next in worms, like so in nematodes, which is amazing, which aren't actually worms. They're something else, but anyway, in nematodes. And in yeah. humans, uh, we hear... In spiritual circles, we hear a lot about seven generations front and back. So that number 14 seems to be one that resonates that we hear a lot about. I'll say more about that in a minute. A size in humans has actually been able to measure two or three, three generations. So, and a great example is Rachel Yehuda's work, who worked with descendants of the Holocaust and found that that uh, people in that population, children, descendants of Holocaust, people in the Holocaust or Holocaust survivors have high, uh, different cortisol levels. So they're not as resilient. So that's kind of some hard science. That's three generations down the line. The anecdotal uh, stories that I can tell you about that is I'm in three different communities that work with ancestral do this kind of work three different like you know where, where the people are practitioners doing this kind of work and what I thought was so interesting was we've all found I certainly have found and then these other people in these other two groups have found that what we see is that the granddaughters or grandchildren of the ones that experienced the trauma in the first place carry more of a burden so like I have a friend who's actually in this work in one of those communities whose whose grandmother was in the holocaust and she and then she, her mother felt the effect of it but she really carries the burden she's had to do lots and lots and lots of work to to like deal with that and she was one of the ones that brought that to my attention and she's noticed it in other places we also find this in the I live in Lawrence, Kansas, so it's the largest, um, the home to the largest and oldest Indigenous American university. So we have a lot of Indigenous population here. We have a lot of mixed between uh, Caucasian, uh, African American, and Indigenous American. And so we see this as well. We see uh, what we see in that population as well as in the Jewish population, this difficulty accessing joy right yes. all you have to do is look at the history of those of those uh, people and you can see why that would be an issue right definitely and so difficulty accessing joy um these create these generational ex trauma experiences create these barriers so this might be jumping the gun a little bit but how do you break down these barriers yeah well ancestral clearing is one of the ways that we do that 
I mean, I, I also bring in compassionate inquiry, which is a process that uh, Gabor Mate teaches. I've had his training. Um, but I usually start with the ancestor. It kind of depends. It's, I can kind of do both, but I'm, I'm going to give you guys a, an experience today of of one of the five techniques in ancestral clearing and then bringing compassion inquiry would be another thing, but you could do that in a private session. But I'm just saying there are ways to do this. Another thing that shows up is scarcity. Like people, like I, I don't have enough, right? That shows up. I don't, I am, I'm not enough. That shows up. Um, I'm not lovable. All the things I'm mentioning, access to joy, there's not enough. I'm not enough. I, I'm not lovable. These all close the heart. And with the um, there's not enough and scarcity happening now, hoarding has become almost an epidemic, right? So talk about how these behaviors, like all of a sudden you'll notice behaviors. It's like, where is this coming from? Yeah, I again, I think there's some anecdotal studies um, that I've like read that science is kind of looking at this where people that have been stressed in one generation, like not enough resources, in the next generation, their children or grandchildren will have a propensity for holding weight. And that's interesting to me as an evolutionary biologist, I have a science background in case you didn't guess. And the, the so I ask myself, what's that about? What well, that's about survival. Like we don't have these behaviors, they're not persistent in the lineage unless they're providing some sort of survival uh, advantage. Uh, otherwise, like we wouldn't be able to, it wouldn't reproduce into the next generation. So there are those things. And then the other thing I just wanted just to, just to go back to what I was saying about 14 generations, seven generations, that kind of stuff, three generations. That's a very Newtonian viewpoint. When we look at the quantum from a quantum perspective, we can access time that the, in the present moment, we access past, present and future all at once. And there's no, there's no, it's all the same. It's like, there's no, oh, we, only, we can only do 14. We do it all, right? When, you, and we, when ancestral clearing brings in that perspective, we work in the, in the present moment. So we're working in the quantum field and we're clearing it all. Front and back. It's like clearing present moment clears past and future. That's interesting to me. Right? So something that I carried that I came in with from my uh, grandparents or great, 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 great grandfather or whatever, I clear it now and my son doesn't have to carry it. And he doesn't pass it on either. That's kind of interesting. Now, there's no science on that. We can't make claims in ancestral clearing, but we notice you know, we have these, we, we notice things like this. Definitely changes in behavior for sure. Yeah, we, we, we notice. I certainly, I noticed it in my own body and I noticed it in the people in the room when I was in the pain management programs, why I was so impressed with it. I was like, what the heck is going on here? And, and uh, as I felt my own pain move. And, and so it's addressing some kind of stuck energy in the body. And these traumas do get stuck in the body and somehow that information gets passed along with the gifts of our ancestors, their burdens get passed to us as well. Yes, I know. Um, I cleared some ancestral from my grandmother. She moved, her family moved here from Italy during, you know, the, the 1914-15 time. And so I started noticing behaviors. It's like, where is this coming from? And the work that I did, I saw this whole movie flash before my eyes of, different experiences of that time. And I realized my hoarding behaviors or the need to move. It's like, all right, there's bullshit going on. We got to move, you know? So I have this sudden urge to move. <laughs> and so once I recognized where it was coming from and, and clearing that out, it was, it was a fascinating experience. That's for sure. And I'm so grateful. I was aware enough about the science and about, you know, this kind of stress coming up affecting my behaviors so you talked about giving us an experience of one of the five techniques mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah so uh, so this is kind of how it works and it'll take about five minutes to take you through it if that's okay um absolutely this technique in the in the practice as i said we're working in the in the in the, in the uh, unified field 
in the field of consciousness. So we're working with that energy and we're actually addressing the creator, the creator that created all of it. We're actually addressing that and asking that energy to please act on our behalf to help us release that which no longer serves us. We're not asking it to release it. We're asking it to help us release it. Okay, so we're still empowering. We're still, we're still empowering ourselves. We're asking for help because if we could have done it, we would have done it by now, but we haven't been able to figure it out. So we ask for help from a higher authority. So that's kind of what we're doing. And we use the, we use the word forgive to mean we're offering up that which no longer serves us. That's how we're using that word. So I would like uh, everyone listening to this, to this works in the present moment. So it past, present, whenever the replay is just as powerful as the, as the live. Um, I'd like everyone listening to this to just notice what they feel in the body sensation wise. Put your attention on that and just breathe normally and let these words pass over you. Infinite creator, all that you are, source of all that is, was, and ever will be. We ask humbly and gratefully that you help everyone listening to this and all of their relationships, all of their ancestors and all of their relationships through all relevant time, space, dimension, lives, lifetimes, and incarnations. For all the times they felt let down by life, by family members, by relationships, by anyone representing the creator, for any time they felt let down by the creator in any name or form. For any time they turned their back on the creator or felt the creator turned its back on them. Please help everyone involved to forgive each other and forgive themselves and be at peace with one another and at peace with themselves. Please and thank you. For all the times you weren't supported, nurtured, loved and cherished the way you needed. Please help all of you to forgive yourselves, forgive each other. For the times you didn't support, nurture, and love others in the ways they needed. For any time you were out of integrity with one another or another out of integrity with you. Please help all of you to forgive and release one another, forgive and release yourselves. Find peace with one another and find peace with yourselves. Please and thank you. For all war, battle, holocaust, genocide, persecution, slavery, injustice of any kind, oppression, misuse of power, position, authority, politically, judicially, medically, spiritually, or any other way. For all slander and libel, libel and any other misuse of the power of the word, please help everyone involved directly or indirectly to forgive each other and forgive themselves, now and forever, please, and thank you. For all hurts and wrongs, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, sexual, financial, through thought, word, or action, for all that happened and all you made it mean, please help all of you to forgive one another and forgive yourselves. Please and thank you for all suicide, incest, murder, rape, abortion, infidelity, infertility, miscarriage, all of it. Everyone involved in any way, please help you all forgive each other, help you all forgive yourselves. Find peace with one another and find peace with yourselves, please and thank you. For any anyone who was stubborn, judgmental or bullying for the times you didn't follow the inner knowing of your heart for this and all regret please help you all forgive one another and forgive yourselves for the highest good please and thank you for all the hurts and wrongs to the earth life of the earth native indigenous first nation aboriginal people please help all of you to forgive one another and forgive yourselves for all that happened and all you made it mean no matter what it was Please be at peace with one another, at peace with yourselves. Please and thank you. For any time you withheld love, for any time you manipulated another or violated their free will, and for any time anyone did this to you, for any time anyone was trapped physically, emotionally, mentally, sexually, financially, spiritually, or in any other way, for any time anyone felt forsaken and forgotten, locked up and forgotten, or condemned and forgotten, and for all the associated inverse burden, Please help everyone involved to forgive each other and forgive yourselves now and forever, please. And thank you for all betrayal, stealing, gaslighting, back, backbiting, jealousy, secrecy, or lying. 
for any time words were left unspoken to keep the peace in the moment and any resulting resentment. Please help everyone involved to forgive each other and forgive yourselves, please and thank you. For any time you believe, felt, or shown you weren't enough. For the times you tried to earn or learn your way into the value of your family, your relationships, or into the grace and love of the creator. For all that led up to this and all that arose from it, please help all of you to forgive and release one another and forgive yourselves. Be at peace with one another and at peace with yourselves, please, and thank you. For all empathic hurts and wrongs, times you took on others' unresolved issues, carried or shouldered their burdens. For all adversity, struggle, and hardship you took on, especially as children. For all dark night of the soul experiences, please help you all forgive and release one another, forgive and release yourselves, all family members and relationships. Times this was done to you and times you did this to others. Please and thank you, infinite creator, all that you are, please and thank you. For the times you weren't shown or encouraged to stand up, speak up, and do things your way. For the times you didn't feel safe to say no when appropriate. Please help all of you forgive your parents, family members, and relationships. Help them all forgive you and help you all forgive yourselves. Please and thank you. For all the times you were attacked, blamed, judged, and misunderstood. For any time anyone did this, any time you did this to others, for any manipulation, deceit, or rejection, please help all of you to forgive one another and forgive yourselves. Find peace with one another and find peace with yourselves, please, and thank you. For all hurts and wrongs, anything we left out, if it serves the highest good, we include it now. For all that happened and all you made it mean, everything that led up to and arose from, hurts, wrongs, limitation, or burden of any kind that's not serving the highest good. We ask all of you, everyone involved, directly or indirectly, to forgive your parents, grandparents, siblings, children, and grandchildren. Help them all forgive you and help you all forgive yourselves, please and thank you. Your whole family and lineage. Help you forgive your cousins, aunts, uncles, step, in-laws, hidden, secret, foster, adopted, and all other significant people, beings, family members, relationships, role models, and authority figures. Help them all forgive you and help you all forgive yourselves, please and thank you. Infinite creator, all that you are. Please and thank you for the highest good, Please help all of you to release all weight, pain, burden, sin, debt, death, negativity, limitation, any superstition energy, spells, hexes, curses, white magic, black, black magic, real or imagined. Please and thank you. Please direct everyone into your perfect love and light for the highest good only and always. Please and thank you. Please and thank you. Please and thank you. And take a breath in and let it out and just notice how that feels in the body. Word medicine. That was fantastic. Yeah, word medicine. Yeah, I'm a linguist. I'm a professional linguist and words, words are powerful. I mean, even in the Bible, it talks about the word went out and came back fulfilled. And that was... Um, you know, in a, in a state of prayer is very powerful place to be as well. Very healing place to be. You mentioned a word before, and I work with people who are triggered by this word. And it's interesting because in your demonstration of the technique, um, you use the word as well, and that's forgive and forgiveness. And it's, it's definitely a word that, you know, people who experience trauma would use that word as a, as a block or a barrier. And for me, um, I kind of redefined the word based on experience. And when you forgive, you're actually reprogramming your inner responses and and reactions to it and and it doesn't allow that you know so I'm going to reprogram instead of forgive I'm going to reprogram so I don't know if you've had experiences or what you do for those powerful words especially if somebody has a barrier to a word like forgive mm -hmm. that's why I explained it straight up this is how we use this we we're, we're doing this thing and this is how we, this is the word we used to mean that. 
And I also offer a 40 day, 40 days of forgiveness program, which is like a, an email that's, I think it's 40, 40, 42 emails. Cause there's a couple of bonuses each day is a topic around a, an aspect of forgiveness, like forgiving my brother or <laughs> forgiving, forgiving my mother or, uh, you know, forgiving when I just can't forgive, you know, how do I even forgive the unforgivable? Like all those kinds of things. There's an aspect each day has a thing like that and an ancestral clearing prayer to go with it, right? So it's a, it's a beautiful, uh, it's a beautiful program. And there's a meditation also that goes with it that helps us actually relieve it. I bring yoga into it, bring up a, a, a meditation to help us release, um, and, you know, stuck stuck energy that we have around the thing that we can't forgive. Here's the thing. It's not like, um, oh, you got to forgive that person. It's not like that. Because what am I holding on to that's keeping me from doing that in the first place? That's yes, what that I'm person working. has nothing to do with what you're holding on to. Yeah. Even though they might have done the thing yeah. that that's maybe okay. hurt you. Yeah. yeah. It's, the, sure. it's the thing we're holding on to. Well, you know, sometimes we need to hold on to that because, you know, if I don't, I'm not going to keep, I'm not going to be feel safe. Right. I mean, you, you know, we can be there. And so the work is like, okay, well, what can we do some work around that? How can you create sure. safety in your life without doing this? And, and what, what's the thing you're making this mean? Right. So sometimes it can be identity. I identify. With absolutely. It. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. So you talked about a freebie. Um, you sent me a freebie for our audience um, called Ancestral Clearing Prayers ebook. Tell us about that because I'll be leaving um, a link to that in the description. Yeah, there's, it's a it's a collection of eight different ancestral clearing prayers that have different uh, aspects of. Uh, there's one around abundance, and there's there's one around compassion, and so there's you know heart opening and and um, you know. Anyway, eight different aspects of, of forgiveness that then they're all like slightly different from one another. And um, and they're all, you know, they're all based on the same energy that I just brought in with this practice. They're just kind of focused in a, in a certain way. And, Perfect. Um, yeah. Perfect. Thank you for that. Thank you for, uh, for that gift for our listeners as well. Those awakening hearts that uh, would but definitely benefit from this. And Tell us about your uh, best-selling author book, The Way Through Chronic Pain, Tools to Reclaim Your Healing Power. So uh, I was, uh, I suffered with chronic pain for 40 years, and I finally was able to find somebody who actually understood chronic pain and helped me heal. Um, his name was Dr. Peter Prescott, and he wrote the book, Conquer Chronic Pain, an Innovative Mind-Body Approach. Um, he passed away, but he left this beautiful book. It's the doctory researchery stuff around chronic pain. And I wrote this follow-up book, which is The Way Through Chronic Pain Tools to, to Reclaim Your Healing Power, which is really the patient manual. But like, this is how I did it. And these are the things you have to attend to. And this is also, by the way, the voice of a chronic pain sufferer, which is physical, mental, and emotional pain. It's all the same to the brain. All of that sends the same signal to the hurt, to the brain. It hurts. The brain can't tell the difference between a broken bone and a broken heart. So one way that we awaken the heart, if it's closed, is we do the work around healing whatever closed it in the first place. Do the work. That's important right there. And I know awakening hearts that are listening, you know, they're willing to do the work. And this is why we do what we do is to spread these tools to get us through these times. And boy, these times are mm, very interesting. <laughs> so um, I would love for you to leave some last thoughts to our listeners about these times and how we can get through them. Well, one thing right off the bat is we got to uh, attend to the hierarchy of healing, right? First, we need calmness in the nervous system. So nice, long, deep breath work, really important to keep the nervous system regulated and trained so that when we do get some kind of thing that we're activated, we can drop, right. we're activated, but we're not activated a lot and we're not activated for very long. We come right back to regulation. So that's number one. Number two, which would be after you're regulated, sense of belonging. We have to wire to be connected. 
We have to have a feeling of belonging. So, you know, engage. However, be careful about your engagement. You know, like social media, <laughs> right? Is maybe not, you know, you know, meter your time, right? And and focus, you know, consciously decide what kind of connection that you're coming, that you're bringing in, right? And then third is, is the learning. Right, so first we regulate, then we have a sense of belonging, then we can learn stuff. We have to have it in that order. So, um, you know, if I'm all activated and upset, um, I don't generally make very good decisions because I'm not thinking straight, because I'm not actually accessing, when I'm freaked out, I'm not accessing the part of the brain that it can think clearly. So I've learned because of this that when I'm, you know, something horrible happened, like my heat pump went out uh, after the storm, and, and I, I'm, I, I couldn't make a decision about how to deal with that right away. <laughs> right? It was, they, they couldn't get it started again. So we're, we're, we're kind of wondering, like, we've got a whole process we have to follow. Well, I made sure that I regulated myself before I made a decision one way or another about how to move forward with that, just as an example. Yeah. Yes, there are some times where we're making decisions where we shouldn't be because we're not in the right place. That's right. And you mentioned um, belonging. I mean, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, that's the root chakra. If we don't feel like we belong, we can't learn, we can't make clear decisions. Mm -hmm. And it just kind of domino effects into every aspect of our lives. If that root chakra is not grounded and rooted in belonging. So that is so true. So I want to thank you for being on the show with us and to our listeners, uh, Awakening Hearts. So thank you for being on this journey with me. And in the meantime, keep being amazing. Mm -hmm.